Hello and welcome to the Rock Your Voice podcast. Vocal coaching tips that will transform your voice, interviews that will inspire, industry guidance, and so much more. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. On today's episode, I am so excited to welcome award-winning singer, songwriter, and producer, Jeff Trott. He's a huge part of the Nashville music scene. He has co-written some of my all-time favorite songs. So I'll say it again, this was such an honor to have time to speak with him today because he co-wrote If It Makes You Happy, Every Day Is A Winding Road, A Change, My Favorite Mistake, Soak Up The Sun. Of course, you know these are Sheryl Crow songs. And if again, you know me, Sheryl Crow is one of my favorite artists. And uh, Jeff Trott is one of my favorite songwriters. Jeff was also awarded Songwriter of the Year by BMI in 1998. And his album Dig Up The AstroTurf is also available on his website, jefftrot.com. I will put all the links in the show notes, but for now, I will let you listen to my conversation with the wonderful Jeff Trot. Jeff, thank you so much and welcome to the Rock Your Voice podcast. I always do start with asking people what their first memory of music is. Well, my first memory of music would probably be, you know, my mom playing the AM radio in her car and hearing, I don't know, probably the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or something cool, like that. Cool. So I was kind of trained early uh, <laughs> in that world. And and then I, in my neighborhood, there was this kid named Brian Burwell, who was like, kind of like, not really a bully, but he's kind of a tough kid. Okay. And he was like playing me like, you know, get off my cloud and all these like Rolling Stone songs and stuff. Right. And I was like, oh my God, wow, what is this? And yeah. that sucked me into it. So those are, awesome. you know, he was, I can, I can say that Brian is the one that turned me into a diehard Rolling Stones fan, I guess. That's so, really so. cool. Are you still friends with Brian? Do you still know where Brian I is? I am. What? We're, we're a couple of, yeah, we're um, through, you know, Instagram and, and Facebook, we were able to reconnect. That's awesome. And, uh, and we, as it turns out, we're both like really rabid, diehard San Francisco Giants fans. Okay, So okay. we follow baseball and all that stuff. So that's kind of a geeky thing that we have. Very and then cool. we also love music and I have him, you know, to thank for turning me on to rock and roll. So, Love it. Giants, yeah. that's the one and only baseball game I've ever been to in San Francisco. Really? Yep. And it was the best night ever. Still don't understand oh, really yeah. what's going on, but I had a great time. Did oh. you did you see the game in San Francisco? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So that ex that explains it. it. It's it's like, you know, not being too biased, but it's a really great experience because the fans are really wonderful yes. they're not they're not mean or mm -hmm. they're you know like if you don't you know if you're um rooting for the opposite the, the opponent or whatever um they'll they'll kind of rib you yeah, yeah you know yeah. lightheartedly <laughs> but they'll never pour beer over your head right, you know? right? because yeah. they love beer so much it was like no i'm not gonna waste it <laughs> on a Dodger in stadium beer <laughs> <laughs> that costs like twenty dollars <laughs> a pint you know like oh, but uh that's cool at what point was it that you decided that music was going to be part of your life was that something that you always felt or knew or or was there a moment that was like you know what this is the path i have to take well funny enough um so my parents had this old upright piano in the in the downstairs part of a house and no one played it okay. and i was like i think they just bought it for decoration or right. something like that and so i started like you know sitting down and just like touching the keys and pretending that i knew how to uh -huh. play yes and then i would just be making up these songs this is what my mom told me recently yeah. i don't i barely remember it but okay. she was like yeah you'd sit for hours just like oh. you know making up songs and stuff like that and so I never, and then she, she asked me if I wanted to take piano lessons and I was like, oh no, I just like, you know, playing around or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was what sort of tuned my ears to, um, you know, music intervals and melodies mm -hmm, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. 
and I never tried to really learn how to play, you know, like classical music. Mm -hmm. um, but although I listened to it, I think that's where it kind of started, I think, is the is that the piano and I never took lessons right. and but um one thing that I did do was um I had you know these neighborhood friends and what we would do is pretend to do a radio broadcast amazing and 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 we so what we would do is like we'd play our favorite records and all that and yes. pretend that we were broadcasting yes. and stuff and we'd have like a fake little mic i think we had a little tape recorder microphone set up and eventually you know when i got to my college years i ended up majoring in telecommunications mm -hmm. thinking okay i'm going to be a dj and play okay. music cuz okay. I, I i love that but I was also a sort of amateur musician that could play a little guitar, I could play bass, I could play a little piano. Uh, during the sort of punk era, mm -hmm. whatever, I started playing in garage bands and people would say like, hey, I hear you're a pretty good player, you know? And I'm like, yeah. nah, I'm not that great, but yeah, hey, I'll, yeah, I'll play bass for you or awesome. I'll play guitar. Awesome. So I filled in for people most of the time. Nice. And then one time in the sort of mid eighties, I was asked to, um, to play with this band, um, to, to fill in for this guitar player. Mm -hmm. And then like two months later, we got signed to a major record nice, deal. And nice. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I guess I'm not going to be a radio DJ. There you go. <laughs> there there you a, that's go. the end of that. So, <laughs> that's and that's, awesome. that's when I became a, professional musician is is at that point right. when that band the band was called wire train and we were we got signed to 415 records and it was affiliated with i think cbs sony columbia okay, records okay, so it was okay. a major major deal nice that's so awesome and so so is that the path that led you into discovering your your writing as well funny enough like I played in you know garage bands and doing cover songs like Aerosmith and nice. stuff like that and but I got tired of playing you know covers and yes. so I started writing songs for us to play original songs that were mm -hmm. ours and um and that's what started my my songwriting you know my mom says that when I started it when I was like six and I was playing the piano that right. I was making up these songs but I can't really remember that right. far back. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. My my mom always told me a story because I was like, I used I had piano lessons and I used to love them, but my my piano teacher um was like, no, nah, I can't work with her anymore. You're, yeah. Because I just used to make up my own songs. It's like, nope. She only likes playing her own songs. So like, so I can't teach her stuff that didn't exist until she played it. So. <laughs> well, and you know what? It, that's actually why I started writing my own music was that playing in these cover bands i'd have to learn other people's parts yes and yes. it wouldn't be good enough to quite or i could i you know some people say oh no you were awesome yeah, but yeah. like in my mind i was like oh no i suck so you know what i'm gonna make up my own totally. you know bogus ass song and just <laughs> you know see where it takes me you know I so love it. i love so. it yeah. You know, it's like, hey, why not? Why don't we play our own music? And people are like, well, I don't know. How do you do that? And right. I'm like, I don't know. Just, you know, let's write some words and <laughs> a melody awesome. and see what happens. That's so. awesome. So and then I guess then it just kind of snowballed from there with the writing. Did it's, you just from doing it more and more? Or did you? I know because yeah. now there's a lot more um, contemporary and commercial kind of there's courses all over the place and there's there's, you know, people teaching all this kind of stuff now master but... classes yeah, and all yeah, that stuff yeah. and and, the, and you know they and and it's just somebody's point of view mm -hmm, like okay mm -hmm. this is how i started and this is what you got to do but they're, they're really you know when it comes to creating music like any kind of art form you just have to like figure out how to do it yeah and then and then you have to figure out how to do your music and not just imitate somebody else's music, you yes, know? Yes, yes. So, and that's the challenge, but you know, like people, people have, yeah, they have these master classes, great tips on what you can do to improve. And, 
as long as I've been doing it, I always listen to what other people mm-hmm. say, like, hey, you know, I learned how to do this thing by doing that. And I'm like, oh, hey, if I could learn something, you know, at my old age, hell yeah, you <laughs> right? know, come on. Right. Totally, <laughs> you know, totally. so I'm always, I like to hear what young people, how they came up with yeah. their their music or anybody really right. and me i can relate to it and go gosh i never thought about doing that you know That's so cool. that you know I'll take it in it's just another tool that you can use to mm-hmm. get to wherever you're going you yeah, know so yeah. so can can you share a, a little about your so your writing process is it different every time or does it depend who you're working with or how, how do you how do you yeah, go about it it's all of that well i i think you know if I am writing with somebody, well, my process is like, it's like you're getting together with somebody that maybe you've never worked with before. Mm -hmm. It's good to like, it's like if you're having a little party, you want to come to the party with something. You want to bring a snack or a drink or whatever it is. So usually I prepare before I write not all the time sometimes i just wing it because i've been doing it for so long (laughs) but if i have time what i like to do is sit down and just kind of like try to come up with a melody and then maybe even come up with a few little themes like despair you know like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how to overcome despair or maybe a celebration song or whatever it is and then just have a list titles a lot of people i mean this is a lot of people do the same thing Mm -hmm. they'll maybe try to come up with titles that they will share with the person that they're writing and maybe that'll spark something maybe somebody will relate to a title but then it ends up going somewhere completely different as long as you have the spark or the catalyst to get it going moving forward that's all that really matters you know so So usually like a title and one of the things I found out is that trying to come up with band names is a some, sometimes a good way of coming up with titles or songs. Okay, you know? okay, that's interesting. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, Brass Garbage or something like that. <laughs> Here's a brass pipe, Yeah. you yeah. know, gar- I don't know, you know. Uh, awesome. and, then, and then somebody are like, that's a stupid, stupid title, but hey, what about this? And yeah. that's all it takes is a catalyst. So to uh, you get the get it going and I feel like it's all about momentum mm-hmm, momentum mm-hmm. too so if you are stuck on something then sometimes it's good to just throw something completely random yes. and see what that does because that'll you're we're all thinking and we're trying to go somewhere on this journey together to write a song and all right, that right but do you find sometimes people just will come into it and they're just trying so hard that it blocks the process of that flow? Yeah, like I feel like a lot of times people make things much harder than they need to be. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you're not writing Shakespeare. Right. You're not writing a sonnet, okay? I mean, yeah. you can yeah. if you want, you know, I would never do that. <laughs> but if you're stuck, it's like, well, just, just, um, come up with a line that's a placeholder Mm -hmm. it could be something really random you know you know slapping you with a paintbrush or something like (laughs) that or i don't know you're you're you're, you know and then and then go okay no that's like that's not good uh why don't we you know change slap to something else or or or, you know paint you with a paintbrush or something and i mean that's a lame thing but but (laughs) you should not you should dare to suck yes because like you really don't know where that song is going to go and it might inspire maybe one of the best songs you've ever written so you know do the main thing is don't get stuck you know just keep moving on or if if maybe it's this song is not really doing anything for you move on and try something different you know so and you usually these writing sessions here in nashville people tend to like have these like three hour sessions Mm -hmm. three hour writing sessions and i used to scoff at that i used to you know because i i moved here from la 
you know, where sometimes you take all day writing a song or something like that. I was like going, oh, three hours. That sounds like you're working at, you know, whatever. You're on the clock or whatever. Three hours. I used to scoff at that. Now I see like, yeah, okay. It's just the right amount of time to be able to get an idea. And these days with Zoom and all that, Mm -hmm. if you don't finish the idea, like I always say, like, get a verse and a chorus get that solid. And if you have to come back to it, you know, then do another session where you're just writing lyrics and finish that second, second verse, second or third verse, and maybe throw in a bridge if you want. Although bridges are really unpopular right now, but (laughs) I think that's out of laziness. I still love a good bridge. Yes, it's my favorite part. (laughs) Come on, come on now. Don't rip us off. Give no. it, you know, you got more. Give us more. That's, you know, that's the so. reason for hanging in there for the first half. It's like, yeah, it's like a you movie. Know. It's like if you don't get to see that pinnacle or that turning point in the movie and then suddenly it's just the end. It's like, no, you got to have a good bridge. Yeah, it's it would be boring without the bridge. Uh, yeah. OK, well, no, uh, we'll we'll instead of doing a bridge let's do like a solo or something mm-hmm, that it's like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. nah <laughs> yeah, right, right. so i still push for bridges yes <laughs> and people are like oh you're you're too old trot you know nobody does bridges anymore i'm like all right well whatever i'm i'll hold the flag for that and yes. you know, shoot me down but i don't care totally uh, <laughs> it's interesting because I'm working with a, with a bunch of um, very green singer songwriters right now. And it's been just so interesting just watching their growth. Like literally one girl showed up to the thing with one line and was nearly crying. She's like, I imposter, don't even, I shouldn't be here. Like I'm not a songwriter. But she wrote an incredible song, like really good. Like it's been amazing. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. And like you said, bring something to the party and, and, and work on that. But... I'm kind of digressing here. I'm kind of forgetting where I'm going, but kind of trends and stuff like that. There, I heard, I got some of the other people to help coach and kind of mentor them along the way with the songwriting. And then suddenly their heads were all spinning and they're worrying too much because one person said a song should be this way. Another person said a song should be this way. And then there's of course, TikTok and all of this stuff with your 30 sure. second anthem. And it's like, you know what guys, write your song. <laughs> like do, yeah. take take what you want but like what what are your thoughts on that because these guys their poor heads were spinning by the end of it because i fed them i think maybe too much information and they're judging their writing so harshly now so yeah what, what are your thoughts on I think that? my thought my thoughts are that you know look this isn't etched in stone yes it's yes. a template. It's like you're not even recording the damn thing yet. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, just write write a song and then you can improve it. You can go back, tweak the lines. A lot of times I've written with people and then like two, you know, after the writing session, maybe two hours later, you know, my co-writer will go, hey, I thought about what if yeah. we change that one word in this line or mm-hmm. whatever? And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. How about this? And then you by, you know, later on, you might have edited a better song, yes. you know, just by yes. doing it after the fact, have a little time, maybe listen to it the next day and yeah. go, oh, wait a minute, that was pretty darn good. Right? I, you know, maybe I'm overthinking this thing and ruining a really great yes. idea. Yes. So, um, so I think, you know, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Know that it's not, you know, etched in stone yeah. and that you yeah. can always make it improve it. And even all the way up to the point where, you know, you're getting ready to track it or record it or throw down a vocal on it. It's like, that's the thing. When you go in to do vocals, sometimes you end up changing words mm-hmm. because they just don't sound good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe you're singing it and it sounds too harsh or it just doesn't flow. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's when, hey, you know, get the pencil out and erase that word and put something else in totally. or whatever. Um, totally. Or use your phone and go in there and like, you know, edit it out. Yes. And get a better word that sings better, one that you believe. Yeah. And I think that's really best advice when it comes to that. Love it, love it. So you've written with with so many amazing artists. And um, I I have to say thank you because Sheryl Crow was on my Walkman 
the hour there and the hour back from music school for like every day of music school. <laughs> um, so yeah, literally those songs were just like incredibly influential to me and in my whole journey through music school. But um, I would love to know if it, what, what's one of your favorite co-writing memories? with any of your artists doesn't have to be share any of your, what's one of your favorite co-writing memories um well let's see maybe uh soak up the sun is is pretty much one of the one of my most enjoyable uh memories of writing a song and just to, to, i'll i'll try i won't bore you too much uh with this <laughs> but hopefully <laughs> there's not. nothing boring uh, here there's nothing boring. so i um cheryl was working on a record and we had spent a whole summer writing songs and we were really not getting anywhere and i i mean we must have written like you know 20 or 30 songs mm -hmm. during this one summer and um she had been dating owen wilson and all this <laughs> stuff so i think she had so many distractions and stuff and then wasn't really not really ready to write mm -hmm. songs or something like that I don't know and and so I kind of got a little tired and I thought gosh you know I'm giving her all these great ideas and so what I did was I told her look I'm gonna let's take a break mm -hmm. from this and I had so many ideas that I wanted to do a solo record okay. so I I um so I ended up spending like I don't know, two or three months just writing songs for my own record, nice. which I ended up doing. And then at the end of making my record, I get a call from Cheryl saying like, I don't have any songs with you on this new record, which was, I think it was a, her record, Come On, Come On. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I need to have something that we've written together because we have this history yes. now. So, I, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm completely, I've already done a record that I'm already <laughs> written out. So um, Paimo is living up in, in Portland, Oregon, and she had moved to New York. And so she was out, out in New York and she just like, you know, why don't you just grab a flight, come out to New York, hang with me for a few days and then see what we could come up with. Yeah, yeah. So I was really, kind of worried like oh my god i have nothing to give her i'm completely drained emotionally because right. i've done my own record i feel good about it but i don't have anything yeah yeah and so you know in portland it rains all the time okay. i it or at least when i lived there in the sort of uh, early 2000s and um and so i get to the portland airport and i'm thinking gosh Cheryl's just gonna be disappointed at all this stuff and <laughs> and I'm on the plane and I'm waiting to take off to go to New York and I'm, my clothes are completely soaking wet oh, no. and I'm thinking like wow this is so crazy I'm leaving Portland to go to New York which is really the weather was like it was sunny okay. and all this stuff and I'm thinking like wow I can't believe I'm going to New York to get some sun mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I'm soaking wet and all this and then I start thinking like soak up the sun nice. I think you know it just popped into my head so I have this flight that's about a five hour flight to New York and I don't have you know there weren't iPhones back right, then and right. all that stuff I didn't bring a tape recorder and so I had this melody in my head and it was kind of a uh, kind of like a Brian Wilson Beach Boys type nice. of thing and I came up with the chorus to soak up the sun and I had all the harmonies in my head and I had to keep it in my head <laughs> for five hours <laughs> So that's, oh you know, gosh. it's like watching, you know, a commercial over <laughs> yes, and over for five yes. hours. And I had it and I didn't have a, you know, little keyboard Nothing. to like come up with, you know, the chords or anything. I, I just yeah. had to have it. I held it in my head. I arrive. Cheryl greets me. All right. I'm so excited to see you. Oh, my God. Um, what do you have for me? And I was like, going. Well, I do have this idea. I go, it's a little poppy, maybe not really Cheryl Crow, but I'll play it. I'll play mm -hmm. it for you. And so she hands me a guitar and I'm sitting there and I'm like, 
well, I don't know what chords right. it is. I know what the melody is. So I'm like kind of fumbling around. And then I just started playing, you know, the chorus for it. her. And and she goes, wow, well, that's, wow. that's really good. I think my brother would really like this song. And I was like going, okay, is that good? Right, right. I don't think she <laughs> likes her brother's taste in music. So maybe that's bad. And she's like, well, let's work on it. Let's finish this thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We sat down and within an hour, we had the whole song. Amazing. Written. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. It would just, it just unfolded. We, the way we work, she's a really great, quick lyricist. Um, I'm more of a melody guy, but I'm also nice. like a concept guy okay. too. Like yeah. I'll come up with an idea for a song, you know, um, you know, about a dreamer or something like that. And then, and then it just turns into a song. Yeah, yeah. And so what we do, it's almost like this little badminton game, like, right. like toss the word up or toss the line. And then like, yeah. I'll hit one back. How about this? You know, so, good. so with her, she can just like, just churn out words and I'm a much better editor okay. so i'll just take the hey what if we change this to that mm -hmm. i like the idea we had but you know and yeah. it just comes together like i'm just the perfect companion for right. her to write songs and there's this trust that we yeah. have too she trusts me that i'm going to do what is is right for the songs that we write so with her good. so uh so that's kind of how we work you know i i like to think of myself as like if we want to use baseball terminology, which I don't want to bore your listeners <laughs> who don't like baseball. But anyways, we started I with baseball. We're going, <laughs> we're started. We started with baseball. And by the way, my solo record is called dig up the Astro turf, which is kind yes. of a loot. It, that's the turf that they artificial turf that they used to use for yes, baseball yes. instead of grass, which fortunately they've gotten rid of all the artificial turf. Anyways, <laughs> Too many tangents. So <laughs> I would consider myself a starting pitcher where mm -hmm. I, I start the game. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl's what I would call a closer. Right. It was like, okay, I know what to do. I'm taking this it. thing down the road and it's going to be great. So, so good. that's, uh, we're a good team, you yes, know, and yes. that's what it's really about. It's not, you know, I put my ego aside she puts her ego aside we just like hey whatever yeah. we could do to create a song that we both believe in yes you know? that is so important the ego thing it's like it's got to be about the song not not the egos it's it's yeah or if you if you want to do the ego thing have fun with it where you're both boasting and having a right. you know we're, we're both you know being over the top and like arrogant and stuff but Love in a it. playful way yeah. you know where it's like it turns into something you know totally. the energy um but it's not about it's not about me it's about the song you yes. know like, yes let's yes. serve that you know so so good so it works good. out sometimes sometimes it doesn't sometimes yeah. you just come up with a shit idea and you pretend that it's really good and then at the end of the day we're both like eh. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe not no maybe not maybe this is not good yeah. <laughs> are there any that have really taken you by surprise that you were like this isn't really that great and then you turn around and it's like really kicking ass <laughs> yes the very first hit that I ever had in my career is Every Day is a Winding Road. Right. Uh, and when we we wrote that based on this guitar riff that I came up yeah. with, and I have to give uh, Cheryl's really um, the one that took the ball on that and wrote most of the words. I, th okay. I just helped her, you know, maybe edit it a little bit and right. I, I would throw in a word here and there, but she really, on that one, she wrote most of the words. Um, but we recorded that song after we wrote it and it had no, we didn't have, we weren't really working with a producer because the producer 
we originally had he quit because uh-huh. i don't know he had some differences with cheryl or i don't know what the the full story is on that but the but the positive side of it was it allowed for me to work with her so we were recorded every day as a whiny road and we had too many instruments in it okay. we like oh and we could do this and we could do that we could put bagpipes on it and now we're <laughs> going to do like an irish baritone guitar on it and, okay. we, and we had so many instruments and it's wow. like where is the song it's covered <laughs> up with too much crap we were in the studio working on some other song and this guy robbie robertson who is one of the one of the leaders of this group called the band Mm -hmm. you know um (laughs) he was doing music supervision for the song called phenomenon Mm -hmm. and he called up cheryl and said hey i'm looking for some kind of like grooving tunes because you know it's uh i was immediately thought of you cheryl and so cheryl just kind of yells out like hey jeff do we have any songs we could give to you know, for a movie and all that. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and then she was like, I I don't really want to give any of our good songs away. Well, let's just find something that like will work for the song. And I was like, yeah, that every day is a winding road. A winding road just sucks. Let's just give that to him. And so, Ah. uh, and that's, I mean, I can't believe that now, like that I actually said that. And she was like, you know, you're right. That song just is awful and we so wow we sent it to robbie like we did you know made a rough yeah mix of it and and then he called her back and goes you know i think there's something there but can you just uh do a little mix of it just drums bass guitar and vocal Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. it really stripped down barely anything in it yeah and so so Cheryl tells me, you know, okay, we have to do this leaner version of the song. And so we did. And then we were like, oh my God, there's a really good song in there. Wow. Amazing. I had no idea. So we ended up like, I don't know how it happened that we we got the stripped down version, but then like it might have been Cheryl. I can't remember who came up with the idea like, hey, let's throw some synth on there Mm -hmm, just to mm -hmm. make it sound new or something. I don't know. And so um, so we went into this the studio next door, which belonged to Chad Blake, who is the guy that makes a lot of Cheryl song. Mm -hmm. He let us use his studio and he had this mini book. Uh-huh. that was all set up cool and so she was like can we like play the melody but on a synth you know right. and so it was set up and it had this really low bass tone cool and i was and it wasn't really like <laughs> and i didn't know how to change the octave on it i was trying to find and i was like playing around with it and and so i ended up playing this little bass line ba ba and then she was like you know what that's a better bass line than the one we have let's <laughs> change out our bass line and put that in it instead amazing and so and so um so then we realized ooh, okay this song is really moving and grooving much better we had this drummer come in and play like bongos on it yes we kept going again we started adding <laughs> stuff to it right because we were obsessed and we were crazy and we had no idea you know and um and then and then cheryl's like oh i don't know maybe we shouldn't give maybe this song uh to to robbie it's too good you know like mm. and so and then the other problem that we had was originally um if it makes you happy was really the song that everybody really connected with and they were gonna, it was slated to be our first single. Mm-hmm. But with this movie coming out and this Every Day is a Winding Road song was gonna be in it, yeah. we couldn't release If It Makes You Happy and that song yeah. at the same time. So we, it would like counteract, it would nullify having a single out. So the label said, hey, let's make Every Day is a Winding Road the first single mm-hmm. because this movie mm-hmm. is coming out. Yeah, so. Yeah. 
that was kind of like it got complicated because of that right but anyway oh yeah my so goodness. That <laughs> that's is... one of those songs and now wow. i i'm like wow what was i thinking i wasn't i was that's... i had no idea that yeah. somebody else had to have to see the vision like somebody recognized hey no wait no that's a really good song yeah. you know that's and it's one good. of our one of our most popular songs that we've written together so much so that Prince covered it. <laughs> How have I not heard this? And he didn't never covered he, he never yeah. covered very many songs. So Okay, he I am up, writing this down, Prince. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> and it's actually better than our song. I th- I mean his version of it is like what? it's over the top. It's yeah, like yeah whoa it's got so much soul and like he that, just took it oh i'm he excited did the prince treatment to yeah, it yeah yeah totally i would i would be fascinated to hear your your original mix with with the uh the bagpipe theory the bagpipes <laughs> I, you know, like, I think, <laughs> yeah i don't know it's sometimes you just don't realize what you have you yes. know and it takes somebody else to recognize it totally. you know it's always like like like, oh, that's pretty good. And then you go, oh, I guess maybe it is, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, well, well, so. thank goodness you followed through. Cause honestly, that is one of, one of my favorite songs of all time. Ask anyone who knows me. I'm always like Desert Island Disc. It's like, I'm not sure which, but it's one of Sheryl Crow's albums. So it's like, thank you. Thank you for writing such incredible yeah. music. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I mean, I have to thank Robbie Robertson for saving that song. Yes. Otherwise that would have been a, you know, wow. not even on the record. Wow. Um, wow. But it ended up being a single. And yeah, sometimes it takes somebody else to have the objectivity. Yes. You know, that's yes. important. Totally, so. totally. Well, Jeff, thank you so, so much for this time and sharing your stories and everything. Is is sure. there any advice you would like to part with for any upcoming songwriters or, or singers who haven't quite started yet or or anyone who's thinking of getting into writing music? I think the most important thing to do is be fearless with it mm-hmm. and don't care what people think. Just do your thing and believe in yourself that's really the number one thing because these days everyone's an expert and a lot of times if you are following what somebody else is doing then you're a follower you're not a leader and you need to be a leader if you want to be an artist you know so that's my yes you know so it's it's you know uh, have fun i mean you know just be crazy and out there just be use your you know creative mind and be and take the journey that that your mind wants to go in and and i think that is going to get you further than if you're careful and following everybody's Mm -hmm, advice mm -hmm. sometimes it's sometimes it's good just just follow your own passion you know so perfect and i'm so excited too because you're you're going to be at the 97 south song sessions in penticton yeah. this summer yeah that'll so. be fun yeah. yeah i'm looking forward to that we i was supposed to do it last year and mm-hmm. because of covid the restrictions you know on getting into canada were still you know they still weren't allowing americans yes. in there which i don't blame them you know <laughs> <laughs> damn americans um but uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, going out there and, and having fun with it and playing. I'm going to play some of my hits, but I'm also, I really want to play a couple of like new songs that people haven't Yay, heard and awesome. I think are really good. Love um, it. And so, yeah, I'm lo- really looking forward to it. Oh, excellent. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. So um, I, I look forward to meeting you there in person and, and hearing yeah. more of your stories and, and more of your music. And uh, and thank you again so, so much. Um, I will put links and everything into the show notes here. But is there where can people find you and follow you? Do you uh, is uh, where would you like people to, to start following and, and learning more about you if they're not already? Well, I have a brand new website. It's jefftrot.com. Perfect. A E F F T R O T T.com. That has, you know, kind of updated 
stuff. There's some really great videos on it when I was like really young and in these bands and stuff. It's hard for me to, like my kids see these videos and it's like, <laughs> that's not you. That doesn't look anything like you. That's but awesome. you'll find all that kind of stuff, what I'm up to lately. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Trotsky one I'm also on Facebook and I think I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really a Twitter guy, but I do have it because I don't know, I guess you're supposed to, right? I'm a follower now. There you right? go. I'm a social media follower uh, as opposed so to an awesome. artist that's like a leader, there right? We go. Uh, but anyway, you get the point. Yes. Um, Fantastic. Oh. Well, great. Well, great chatting with you, you and uh, look forward you. to seeing you at the 97 South Song. What is it? It's, it's 97 uh, the... South Song Sessions. All the song S's. Sessions. That's like a tongue twister. <laughs> yes, I could yes. barely say that. It's like, but I'm uh, whatever it is, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> love it Jeff yeah. thank you so so much this has been such a pleasure for me and and thank you again for all the the wonderful music you've created that's honest like just from a purely personal point of view like for that's impacted my life thank you so so much for all of that it's uh, it's been incredible so wonderful to talk with you all right Emma you have a great day Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe. And if you feel inclined to leave a review, I truly, truly appreciate it. You can check out all things voice at rocketvocalstudios.com. That's R-O-C-K-I-T vocalstudios.com. And follow me on social too at Rocket Vocal Studios. Thanks again for listening. And I'll be back with lots more for you very, very soon. 